guys. Lesson 3.1 is exponential functions. So if you flip through chapter 3, you will see that we are going into expo exponential world, logs. We'll talk that we'll reintroduce logarithms here in this chapter, which I know we did logarithms in Algebra 2. I'm not sure they're in Algebra 1, but they are in Algebra 2. So um, I would say a decent amount of what we're doing today is review, just reviewing the basic exponential function and all that entails. So first thing up there you see is a definition. Exponential function. F of x equals a times b to the x. Okay, that is your basic format of an exponential function. Notice it says where a is non-zero, so a has to be a number other than zero, b has to be positive, so whatever's raised to your exponent has to be positive, b cannot equal 1. If that is all true, we have an exponential of a times b to the x, a is what we call the initial value, and B is the base. And we'll be doing some identifying with that um, as we go through. So, we're going to look at what these look like. We're going to look at graphs, a little bit of everything today. So, example one is going through and being able to determine either, yes, this is exponential. No, it's not exponential. And if it is, they ask us to state the initial value and base. For those that aren't exponential, they ask us to be able to tell why. So as we look at that first one, a, f of x equals 3 to the x. Yes, it is exponential, or no, it's not exponential. What do you think? Does that fit the form of an exponential function? What are we thinking? I saw some nods, some yeses. Okay. Okay, so if we think so, I'll go with it. We have to be able to state the initial value and the base. Okay, so how do we identify the base? The base is whatever is raised to the exponent, and that exponent has to have an x in it somehow. So, yes, base is 3. What's that leave to be my initial value? The invisible 1. Because even though it's not there, we can think of this 1 times 3 to the x. Is that still the same as 3 to the x? Yeah. So I'm going to say that this is exponential. My IV, or in other words, initial value is 1, and my base is 3. I used IV and capital B. If you'd rather use lowercase a and lowercase b to represent those, that's fine as well. B. G of x equals 6x to the negative fourth. Exponential or not exponential? No, why not? Okay, if it's exponential, x has to be in the exponent. x here is in the base, and that's not what we want. So, this one I'm going to say not exponential. Please do more than just write not exponential. Why is it not exponential? And the um, description that x is not in the exponent is good for me. So, x is not the exponent. If you want to classify this based on the test we just took, it has a negative exponent, which means it fits into the power function category. Okay. Not that you have to be able to state that right there, but that's where it classifies. C, h of x equals negative 2 times 1.5 to the power of x. Exponential or not exponential? Exponential? Okay. If it's exponential, what is my initial value? 
negative 2. What is my base? 1.5. 1.5 is that base because it's raised to x. Okay, so exponential. Initial value negative 2. Base is 1.5. k of x equals 7 times 2 to the negative x. Exponential? Not exponential. I'm more hesitant on this one. X is in the power, right? So that makes us think it is exponential. And I'm going to agree, it's exponential. The trick is going to become when we give our in initial value and base, because what is basic form of exponential? A times B to the X. This is A times B to the negative X. So what we need to think about, yes, this is exponential. I'm not denying that, I'm not arguing that. However, what we have to figure out is that base. My initial value of 7, that's out front. Initial value of 7 is still good. What do you guys know about a negative exponent? Yeah, it flips the fraction, right? Okay, if it has a negative exponent, to get rid of the negative exponent, we take it to the denominator. So the idea here is that it's still the 7, but first of all, I can take that negative and put it on the 2. So if I think of this as 2 to the negative 1, I'm trying to just get somewhere for you guys. If I think of that as still 7, but 2 to the negative 1 raised the x. I haven't changed anything. Because negative 1 times x would still be negative x. So now I have a power of x, right? My 2 to the negative 1 is a base. What is 2 to the negative 1? The negative 1 tells me to take the 2 to the denominator. So what is 2 to the negative 1? 1 half. So this is 7 times 1 half to the x. Because 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. So we have a base of 1 half. And if you really want to get technical and you want to tell me your base is negative, or excuse me, 2 to the negative first, that's equivalent. But just be careful whenever you give me initial values and bases, you have to be able to make sure it's to the power of x. Okay. And last one. Q of x equals 5 times 6 to the power of pi. Why not? Raise the pi. What's supposed to be in the exponent? An x. Where is my x? Non-existent. Okay, so 5 times 6 to the pi, those are all numbers, so this is just a constant. This is just a horizontal line because it's just a constant. So this is not exponential. What reasoning are you giving? X is, probably the easiest thing to say is X is not the exponent. Okay. okay, got the idea of exponential versus not exponential, right? Okay, next thing we're going to move on. Example two. F of x is 2 to the x. So the function we're worrying about or using is f of x. Notice what does it ask me to find? 
exact value. Meaning, your calculators are only somewhat helpful here. Okay? I do not want necessarily some, I don't want some decimal answer. Now, some decimal answers are exact. If it's a decimal answer that ends, it is exact. Is that someone in here? Well, but I'm going with that someone from another computer. I don't even know. I say it's going to disappear. I'm going with we've had we've run into the issue of someone can pick the wrong room. No. Okay, we're going to keep going on. I actually don't even know. Wait, is this remote to the night? Yeah. Oh, I think it's allowed. No, we have a lesson to get through. You guys have homework no matter how much of this lesson I get through here. So. And the homework is due tomorrow, regardless. Okay, so exact value. Computers. Or computers. Calculators are only somewhat helpful here. If you had a decimal, it might be exact if it's a decimal that ends. But the irrational numbers, those are not exact. Okay? So, we're going to do this section without a calculator. F of 4. Because you did what? 2 to the 4th. And we know 2 to the 4th means to do 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. Old news, right? We just can't make the silly mistakes. Okay, review. F of zero. That means we're doing two to the zero. Anything raised to the zero is one. That is a rule you need to know. Okay, anything raised to zero is one. Granted, now, could the calculator reassure you there? Yes, it can. But you just need to know that. F of negative 3. So that means I'm doing 2 to the negative 3. This is where I don't want you grabbing for the calculators. Have confidence. What's a negative exponent tell me to do? Move it to the denominator. So this is 1 over 2 to the 3rd. And what is 1 over 2 to the 3rd? 1 eighth. One half. So that means this is two to the one half. Yeah, do I remember what a fraction does? A fraction is a root. Remember, the top of the fraction is your power. The denominator of your fraction is your index. So that tells you what kind of root it is. So if this is a denominator of 2, that tells me that this is a square root. So officially, this is the square root of 2 to the first. And I don't normally write it like that, but I want you to realize, where is that 1 half? The 1 is the power. The 2 is the index, or the root. So it's the square root of 2 to the first. What is the square root of 2? Okay. If I want exact value, the square root of 2 is square root of 2. If you tell me 1.414, that is an approximate answer because it is rounded. I'm not going to argue it's an approximate answer, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Okay, I need exact. So that means we leave it in square root form. And E. F of the negative 3 halves. So it's 2 to the negative 3 halves. No. What's the negative? Start with the negative. What's the negative do? Puts it under 1. So now this is going to become 1 over 2 to the 3 halves. Are you still following? Okay. 
Now, we just talked in the last one about a fraction exponent. Fraction exponent means there's going to be a radical involved. What kind of radical is this? My denominator of 2 tells me that this is a square root. 2, and then that numerator of 3 says 2 to the 3rd. What do you know about 2 to the 3rd? So this is 1 over the square root of 8. It's exact. Officially, though, we can keep going. What do we know about the square root of 8? Yeah, because 8 has a perfect square in it. Does this sound a little familiar? 8 is 4 times 2. And so the square root of 4 is 2 on the outside. Radical 2 stays under. And again, that's because it was square root of 4 times square root of 2. Depends on the book, depends on the situation, what we're doing. What if I would say we can't leave it like this? Yeah. What, what is the part we can't leave? We can't leave a radical in the denominator. How do we get rid of a square root of 2? You multiply by square root of 2. If you have a square root, if you multiply by square root of 2 in the denominator, multiply by square root of 2 in the numerator. 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2. In the denominator, first of all, what's square root of 2 times square root of 2? When you multiply square root by itself, you get 2. And then what do we have out front? Another 2. What's 2 times 2? 4. So one option is square root of 2 over 4. Okay. Um, I have this one. 1 over 2 square root of 2. Box my notes, meaning I would probably accept that as well. Again, it depends on the situation. But if we want to go totally... Um, simplified, it's radical 2 over 4. And why am I not simplifying my 2 fourths? Because 2 is under the radical. They have to be both in or both out of the radical to simplify that. Okay. Questions on that section? Moving along. <clears throat> Example 3. Ask us to use the following chart, well, that's part A, to determine the exponential function of f and of g. And then on B, we'll be looking at the graph. So we actually have three problems to do here. So if we look at A, first of all, Realize the part that doesn't matter here is that part, yes? Because that's g of x, that's a different question. So if I want to determine the exponential function for f of x, first of all, what's my exponential function form? Yeah, we're trying to write the form f of x equals a times b to the x. So f of x equals, what does a stand for? Initial value. And what's b stand for? The base. Okay. So initial value is actually usually pretty easy to find because initial value normally happens, this is when we have just the power of x here, normally happens when x is 0. So what do you know when x is 0 here? 
What is my y value? 4. And that is your initial value. So when x is 0, we're going to find our initial value right there of 4. And again, it works majority of the time as long as our power is x. Now, for the base, ask yourself, how do we get from 4 ninths to 4 thirds? How do I get from 4 thirds to 4? How do I get from 4 to 12? And how do I get from 12 to 36? Multiply by 3. And where was that easiest to figure out? Yeah. So right there, it's easiest to see to go from 4 to 12, it's times 3. To go from 12 to 36, it's times 3. Does it work on the others? To go from 4 thirds to 4. If you have 4 over 3, you multiply by 3. That takes me to 4. And guess what? It even works with going from 4 ninths to 4 thirds. Because when you're multiplying by 3, you're canceling. Guess what that 3 is? That is your base. So, what is my function? Four times three to the x. Okay. Questions on f of x. Okay. Shall we try g of x over here? Same x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. G of x is this column over here. Realize you're trying to write a times b to the x. Any thoughts? What? How do you know it's times 1 fourth? Okay. My gut would probably say, okay, I'm dividing by 4, right? And dividing by 4 is multiplying by 1 over 4. You can't give me the dividing by number. And Holden didn't. He's good. He has to give me the multiplying number. And so if, they, if you see um, dividing by 4, which is the obvious one to see, remember that that is multiplying by 1 fourth. Does it work all the way through? Oops. Yeah, every time, and you can think dividing by 4, because our, I know our brains work better there. Every time we're multiplying by, or dividing by 4, which is multiplying by 1 fourth. Okay, so we've got our B. Do we have our A? A is 8, because that is when X is 0. So, g of x equals what? Okay. 8 times 1 fourth to the x. Now, proper form, guys. Notice what I put around the 1 fourth. Parentheses. I'm putting parentheses around the 1 fourth because that is what shows that that exponent of x doesn't just go with the 1, it goes with the whole fraction. Officially, if you don't put those parentheses around the whole fraction, you're not showing me that. Okay? So, officially, those, fraction, those parentheses do need to be there. That is official notation. Okay, what about B? What's the difference? It's a graph. But what's in that graph? Okay, are there some points? Yeah, so this is your first glimpse. I don't know if you guys remember what exponential functions look like. We did deal with them a little bit in Algebra 2. Maybe even Algebra 1. I don't remember. But, so, this is that shape. Here's my recommendation. And I'm going to call this graph H of X. Could I make an XY chart? and write down what the numbers are. Yeah. What do we have dots for? There's what, five dots? Okay. 
So officially there's a dot at negative two something, negative one something. Can we agree there's a dot at zero three? What other dots do you know for sure? One six? Two twelve. Do you have enough information to be able to figure out your equation? Do you have to know what negative 2 and negative 1 are at? No. And honestly, they're probably fractions. So, what do we know here? Okay. Initial value when x equals 0. What is my function value? And that is 3. What else do I know? Yeah, how do we get from 3 to 6 and 6 to 12? Multiply by 2. And so that is my B value. You got an equation to write then? H of X equals A times B to the X. H of X equals 3 times 2 to the X. Okay. We're we getting the basics here. We've looked at what an exponential equation looks like. We've looked at how to plug numbers into it. We've looked at how to write the basics. Now we're going to look a little bit at graphs and the transformations of these. So you saw what a graph looked like a little bit on the other side. Um, the first example here asks us to just graph f of x equals 2 to the x. So let's get the idea of what a basic graph here looks like. I'm going to set up an XY chart. Can you guess what X values I'm going to throw in here? Yeah, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Yes, you need some negatives in here because you need to see what that graph is doing on the negative side here. Okay, put in negative 2. What do you know about 2 to the negative 2? Negative exponent does what? Takes it to the denominator. So this is 1 over 2 squared. What is 1 over 2 squared? 1 fourth. What about negative 1? 2 to the negative 1 means I'm going to be 1 over 2 to the first. And 2 to the first is just 2, so 1 over 2, 1 half. What is 2 raised to the 0? 1. Second time I've asked that today, so it should be in your head again. 2 to the first, 2, 2 to the second, 4. So what do I need? One. I need to be able to go left and right, two. I need to be able to go up, four. Negative two a fourth. Left two and barely up. Negative one a half. Left one, half up. Zero one. One two. 2, 4. Okay, guys. Do you remember that graph? The x, what's the x-axis acting as over there on the left? An asymptote, right? That is a horizontal asymptote. As my graph goes left, it's going to run along the x-axis and never cross it. Okay, my y-intercept is at 1, and that y-intercept is also my initial value. Okay, 
Now, A, B, C. I don't know if we'll get all these graphs necessarily, but we'll try. Um, describe the transformation used on each of the following functions, sketching their graphs. Okay. Left, right, up, down, reflect, stretch, shrink. Remember those options? So what do you know about 2 raised to the x minus 1? <coughs> right one. When the number is with the x, so since it's with the x, it's left or right, opposite the sign. So this is a translate, if I use a good vocabulary word there. Translate right one. Now, do you need a new XY chart for that? I'm not, because didn't I just make a 2 to the XXY chart? And we're going to take those exact dots and move them right one. So now I do need to be able to go 3 right. I still have to be able to go 4 up. So now instead of negative left 2 up a fourth, I'm going to go left 1 up a fourth. Instead of left 1 up a half, I'm just going to go up a half. Instead of just up 1, I have to go right 1 up 1. Instead of right 1 up 2, I'm going to go right 2 up 2. Instead of right 2 up 4, I'm going to go right 3 up 4. Similar looking graph. Uh, this is an example, and we'll talk about it a little bit down on the bottom here. But this, because this graph is increasing, I'm going to throw out the vocabulary right now, that this is an example of exponential growth. You guys have talked about growth and decay, whether it be in a previous math class or a science class. You've heard those words, growth and decay. This is an example of growth. As I move and my graph is increasing to the right, it's an exponential growth. Just throwing it out there for you. Okay, B, h of x equals 2 to the negative x. What kind of transformation is that? Reflection. Reflection where? I think you had it first, right? Or right the first time. Across the y. Here's what I remember. The negative is on the x, yes? Think opposite. If it's on the x, I reflect across the y. If it's out in front of the whole function, that's like it being on the y, so you reflect across the x. So I know since this is on the x, we're going to reflect across y-axis. Which one's the y-axis? The y-axis is the vertical one. So what's my reflection going to do? Instead of starting low and going up, I'm going to start high and go down. Okay, it's a vertical reflection. My left and right sides flip-flop. And so... I'm going to go left 2, up 4. Left 1, up 2, still at 0, 1. Right 1, a half. Right 2, up a fourth. My x-axis is still acting as a horizontal asymptote. Still running alongside there. Take a guess what this is an example of. Decay. This is decay because it's going down. It's starting high and it's consistently getting lower. So this is an example of exponential decay. And C. 
k of x equals 3 times 2 to the x. What is my transformation happening there? It's a what? Yeah. When you multiply by a number larger than 1, it is a vertical stretch. Okay? If we are multiplying by a number that was between 0 and 1, it would be a shrink or a compression. But this is going to be a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3. I didn't even realize it is. Okay. I don't know if I remembered that. So Mallory was pointing out that this is the same graph from example three. Here's what I do want to talk about is how do we do a vertical stretch short of just plugging all the new numbers in. How do we do a vertical stretch? What does a vertical stretch of three do? Multiply what by three? The y values by three. So if we think about these values we already have, we're still going to use the negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. But their outputs were multiplying by 3. So right there, if you if it was at negative 2, a fourth, when you multiply a fourth by 3, it's going to be left 2 and up 3 fourths, which... Okay, so left two up three fourths. What about the one that's negative one and a half? You take that half and multiply by three. What is a half times three? We're going to have to go up one and a half. Um, zero, one. One times three means I'm going to be at zero, three. One, two. Take that 2 and multiply it at 3. I'm now at 6. And 2, 4. Take that 4 and multiply it at 3, and I'm now at 12. What's that vertical stretch cause my graph to do? Going up a lot quicker, isn't it? A lot quicker, a lot steeper. It's still an exponential growth, though. Okay. Um, synopsis of the bottom part. Okay, the bottom part is instead of it being a times b to the x, it's the idea that it's a times e to the x. Okay, k could be some kind of constant. Um, we just talked about exponential growth of decay, yes? Here's the gist. If your exponent is positive, it is growth. If your exponent is negative, it's going to be decay. I can't remember. You might have some growth of decay you have to identify in homework. I can help there tomorrow if we need to. E. Do you guys remember what E is? Yeah. It's a button on your calculator, but it's also 2.718, yada, yada, yada. Okay? You have an E button. Guess what the graph of E to the X looks like? A lot like the graph of 2 to the X. And these bottom ones I'm not getting to are just different reflections, translations, those kind of things. Okay? So, I'll put the graph of e to the x on here, but realize the graph of e to the x just looks like this. Your homework, which you need to do for tomorrow, it's due tomorrow. Are you guys hearing that? Page 261, 1 through 14, and 25 through 30. If you are missing...